If you're looking to get into fermentation and you want a really simple first project, milk kefir is about as easy as you can get. It is a very simple probiotic to make and today I'm going to teach you all the basics including how to make it, how to give your grains a rest, how to add fruit juices, everything you should need to know. I'm Kelsey from RuffandTumbleFarmhouse.com and every single week I share content about farming, family food, and fortitude here on our five acre homestead in northern Minnesota. So there are a couple different types of kefir. There is milk kefir and water kefir. And water kefir you use for water, milk kefir you use for milk. They have evidence of it from being used about 4,000 years ago in China, so it's nothing new to the scene, even if it's kind of new to you. And what it originated from, they believe, is milk was carried historically, and in some places still, I'm sure, in uh, animal skins and animal stomachs, and so there's different proteins and things in your animal stomachs that are there to break down milk. And so that's also how we got rennet for cheese making. And so they believe that is originally where these kefir grains came from. Now I'm gonna say grains a lot, but they actually aren't grains in the terms of like a wheat or a rye or something like that. Uh, they're just called grains because they're kind of grain sized and look a little bit grainy, but these are definitely a gluten-free thing. To start with, there's a couple things you're gonna need to handle your kefir grains, and you actually don't even need these things, they just make it handy. These little nice size strainers are good. A mason jar, I'm using a quart size, but I have certainly made it in smaller jars before. You're also gonna need milk. I have raw goat's milk here. I have used goat's milk and cow's milk. I've only ever used raw, but I have heard that people have just fine results with pasteurized milk as well. So if you don't have raw milk, don't let that stop you from getting your hands on some kefir grains. So here, I have some grains in here that have been taking a very long break. This is not a unusual to see uh, if you have grains that you haven't used for a long time. So what the grains do, they are little cultures of bacteria and yeast, which is why it is so good for you because they are full of, of course, probiotics then that are really good for your gut health. So if you have one that's taken a break for a while and we'll talk about how to give your grains a break, it's definitely not unusual to see basically a, your own little cheese type of a thing form. So what we're gonna do is strain this out because this is technically kefir in here and you can kind of see a grain right there. And we're gonna get these babies rolling in a fresh batch of milk. So just because these grains have been taking a break in, in this milk for probably a couple months, to be honest with you, I am not gonna actually use this kefir because it'll be very, very tangy. And it was fermenting in there basically to the point where when I pop the top off of that, it actually like popped off because it had built up um, some gases in there. So when you wanna give your grains a break, you can honestly just put them in a jar with milk and cap them and stick them in your fridge. I recommend using a two-piece cap, not using the plastic caps because those can actually let in a little bit more air as opposed to the, the two-piece caps are gonna be sealed a lot better and keep things a lot fresher. So they can last for a couple of months in the fridge or if you wanna go even longer than that, up to a year or more, you can dehydrate the grains really easy. Just rinse them in a filtered water and lay them out on a paper towel and just let them naturally dehydrate, make sure that they're out of direct sunlight but are getting some good airflow. So here we're actually starting to get to the grains here. They really look like clumps of cauliflower and I will give these a rinse. If you're gonna rinse your grains, it's typically recommended that you just rinse them in clean milk, which I know especially if you're buying raw milk can seem like, oh my gosh, but you can even just put some in a measuring cup and kind of dip it in there. I have also used filtered water before. It's not the end of the world to use that on your grains. It's not gonna kill them. But once you have your grains all strained out, you're just gonna plop them in a jar. A amount of grains like this, I would say is probably fine for a quart size jar. You're gonna find that they really do multiply very, very quickly. And if you're finding that they just aren't able to ferment your milk fast enough, then you probably just wanna do a slightly smaller jar work with maybe a pint jar like this instead of a quart jar. And then as the grains multiply, you can work up to a larger jar. So now we are just gonna add fresh milk over top of the grains. And I'm gonna do just a little bit less than a full jar because these grains haven't been really active for a while. And if you've got grains that have been 
taking a break, it sometimes can take a little bit longer for them to ferment properly. So if you give them a little less milk to work with, sometimes that is just better for them in terms of them getting back up on their feet. So I know it seems insane, but honestly, that's pretty much it. You put the grains in, you cover them with milk, and then you're gonna let it sit on your countertop for anywhere between about 12 to 24 hours, depending on how warm it is in your house. In the summer, I've started some in the morning and had them be done by the afternoon just because it was so hot in our house. And in the winter, sometimes it's taken as much as two days for them to turn this milk into kefir. So I just put a paper towel on top to keep anything from getting in. It still allows for some airflow to get in there and then just capped it with a rubber band. And so we're gonna let this sit overnight and we will see what we have in the morning. So this is the kefir that came from that batch of milk that I just set on the counter. Now my house is about 68 degrees, so I actually had to whip out a heating pad and set it on low and put it around there because it was just not quite warm enough to make it do its thing. So if you find that yours isn't really activating, try getting it in a warmer environment. It's also a good idea to just take a spoon and kind of stir up the grains in there a little bit because that helps get more of the milk exposed to the cultures. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did earlier and I'm just gonna strain it on through here and you'll kind of have to stir it a little bit. So you can see that it's, I'd say thinner than your traditional kind of yogurt texture. And you can definitely use a bigger strainer than this if you want to. I usually just use this one when I'm straining directly uh, into a jar, but I have other plans for this kefir, so that's why I'm putting it in here. But I might swap on over to a bigger strainer here. Give me just a second. All right, now we're rocking that vintage 1980s yellow Tupperware strainer that everyone's parents seem to have, or at least everyone's parents that I knew. So that just gives you a really good idea of the texture. So you can use this in replacement of buttermilk and recipes. It has a really good tangy flavor. And sometimes I find that after running it through the strainer, it might be a little bit gritty. If you pop it in the blender, then you end up with a really nice smooth consistency again. So you can see the grains are pretty obvious here and you can see that they've probably probably already multiplied which is great and the other thing that's neat about this is everyone's grains are a little bit different they i was reading in the sandor cats book that they have tried to basically recreate this uh you know like a man-made version of this and they can't do it they can't get the bacteria and the yeast cultures to propagate this way and to be this way. It's pretty fascinating. If you want this to get fizzy, what you can do is pour it into a jar, cap it and leave it on the counter for maybe about six hours or so, depending again on how warm your house is, and then test it and see because it is going to carbonate in there and you don't wanna have any jars or things exploding like that. So just make sure, make sure you are checking it regularly if you're gonna go that route and that you'll get a really nice fizzy uh, drink. They call it the champagne of milks, which I think is kind of cool. So there you can see, uh, I think we've definitely increased our amount here. So these are really awesome. You can send them to friends. You can also freeze them after you dehydrate them. There's just a lot of cool things you can do with it. Here's what our finished kefir looks like. Now, if you wanna do a second ferment, so that means you wanna add some sort of flavoring to this kefir, what you're gonna do is take anywhere between a fourth and a half of a cup per quart of kefir. It really depends on your taste. You're just gonna to have to kind of play around with that and add it to the jar and mix it all in really well and then leave it on your countertop for anywhere between six and 12 hours. Again, it just depends on the temperature of your house. And then it is gonna instill that flavor and that taste into your drink and then you just store it in the fridge. I've done it with maple syrup. I've done it with fruit juices. If you're doing fruit juices, it's better to use those really pure juices that haven't been really watered down. They're going to give you the best flavor. So like I said, it could not be easier to make your own milk kefir. If you have any great recipes using kefir, please comment down below or any tips or really great flavor combinations. I'm sure people would love to hear all about it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please like, share, subscribe. This helps our channel get found by more homesteaders and small farmers like us. You can always find new content here every single week about farming, family food, and fortitude here at our Rough and Tumble Farmhouse.